Hi there, this is Matt Heffernan. Welcome back to the Retro Desk. And some more hand modeling, of course, as always, means we have an unboxing today. But what is it going to be today? It seems like we're always unboxing things. Well, the great thing is, is that a lot of folks in the retro community have been very kind enough to uh, donate gift or give me discounts or whatever on a lot of good stuff. So I got a new one today, and this one is going to be a bit out of left field. So first of all, Here's the box. Ooh, what's in the mystery box? I uh, know if you actually uh, pay attention to the uh, thumbnails of the videos <laughs> that you watch, you might know where this is. But even after that thumbnail, it may not even be that clear as to what exactly this is because it's in reference to something that even a pretty diehard retro enthusiast may not even be aware of. So let's. Let's get into this fine postage box. Now, this was sent to me by Sean Harrington, who has been involved in a lot of uh, cool retro projects, and a lot of it based around his experiences as uh, a kid growing up in the 80s, like I'm sure a lot of you are. And... Uh, he's looking to recreate his particular childhood, which may be a little different from most others. Like we've looked at the Commander X-16, which is looking at a way of bringing back the, uh, Com the Commodore 8-bit type computers, like the Commodore 64 and the VIC-20 and all that. And like the ZX Spectrum Next, which of course is a new ZX Spectrum, and all these other things. But this is something... Quite a bit different. Ooh, foamy. More foam. In case you were worried, yes, there's more foam. But, oh, wait, something popped out here. What's this? Well, obviously, this is a cartridge. And we can see it says Astro Smash. Copyright MI1982 Hong Kong. And we can see here... In the back it says Mattel Electronics, which would lead us to believe, well, is this an Intellivision cartridge? Well, no, this is not what Intellivision cartridges look like. This is a totally different form factor. So what's this for? Well, a bit of history. So as you're probably aware, uh, as the Intellivision was a fairly successful product, at least here in the United States, that Mattel uh, created a uh, the very first, really, 16-bit uh, video game system Although, of course, being in 1979, it was uh, not a terribly advanced 16-bit and, in fact, was a bit behind of a lot of uh, contemporary 8-bit systems because it was such a slow and under-featured 16-bit. But it was still very much superior in many respects to the Atari 2600, especially in terms of uh, sound and graphics capabilities. Maybe the games weren't always as great because there weren't as many of them. But uh, it was definitely one of the big uh, competitors. In fact, I would say it's Atari 2600's main competitor until uh, the Nintendo Entertainment System came out uh, several years later. And after the video game, uh, whole industry had crashed around 1983. Well, the thing is, a part of that with Mattel is that they had marketed that in television as being something that you could turn into a computer one day. And the problem is the uh, Federal Trade Commission had a lot of angry customers saying, uh, hey, when's that going to happen? And so Mattel did a couple attempts. They did their first attempt was their original plan A, which was here's this uh, keyboard component that you can add on to the Intellivision and Voila, it's a personal computer. Uh, it, it, that, that had a lot of trouble finding its way to market, uh, getting through uh, FCC things and all, all, all the normal hurdles. And, and so they, they tried, again, with like a 6502 uh, sidecar to turn it into uh, another kind of computer. And, and that <laughs> didn't work out either. And still all these people are like, hey, Where's this computer that Mattel was supposed to make? And so finally they said, all right, we're going to start from scratch. We're going to hire out to this company called Radafin, and they're going to make something that is a, a whole new games-focused 8-bit uh, computer. And here's one of the controllers. Now you'll notice, like the Intellivision, it has a disc uh, directional pad. Of course, this was before the Nintendo 
uh, and the cross type uh, D pads became common. So it's they had discs and it works pretty good. And you know what? It feels a lot better than the Intellivision disc. And instead of the nine buttons, uh, or rather 12 buttons with a overlay on it, it's just, it's cut down to just six buttons on the front and none on the side. So this is your basic controller, but a controller for what? Well, it's that Mattel 8-bit computer and it was called the Aquarius. And it was released in 1983 Remember that uh, rather inauspicious year for uh, video gaming. And it uh, failed pretty much immediately, but it still has its adherents, uh, like our friend Sean. And he's been making uh, things for the Aquarius, uh, like new cartridges, uh, special expansion cartridges that, uh, that give you new uh, IO options and uh, additional sound capability because that it kind of like the the ti 99 it had a, a bunch you could sort of chain up a bunch of uh, uh, accessories to it through this uh, cartridge interface and then the game could be like the thing that goes on the end and so they had printers they had all, all sorts of little doodads to connect to the aquarius and uh it it didn't really help and it was launched and uh, canceled all in the year 1983. Uh, but the thing was is that there were, they made quite a few of them <laughs> because they were thinking, oh, this is going to really take off. Uh, uh, we had the Commodore 64 come out the year before. That was going gangbusters, and that was selling still at the original price. And then you had uh, cost-cutting on legacy things like the TI-99 for a the VIC-20, going for low prices and it just it just wasn't <laughs> the Aquarius was not able to compete so what, what happened was Mattel just canceled it right out and existing stock in stores like Toys R Us went ahead and and put it at cut rate prices like $99 and that's what ended up happening is that a lot of uh, kids like Sean, whose parents did not have the money to shell out for a Commodore 64 or even something crazy like an Apple II, uh, they instead got an Aquarius. And here is its uh, modern uh, sort of uh, grandchild, if you will, the Aquarius Plus. Now, the original Aquarius was an uh, all-in-one uh, type system where it had a chiclet keyboard and then it had of course the cartridge slot and like this it had DE9 form factor connectors for these controllers and uh, and that was pretty much it now this has uh, some uh, new capabilities uh, Frank Vandenhoef who you may know as the creator of the Vera video and audio system for the Commander X16 he designed an FPGA-based uh, reimagining of the Aquarius that's backwards compatible, so it can play this old this old game, and it also has additional capabilities beyond that. And like the Aquarius, it has a, a, a Z80 core. Now, instead of a physical Z80, this is implemented in FPGA along with a bunch of other stuff, and then also connected to an ESP32 that gives it uh, connectivity uh, via Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. So a lot of fun capability. And of course, also an, uh, interfacing to an SD card. So looks like Sean gave me an SD card. He uh, let me borrow this uh, uh, legacy stuff here, like this cartridge and and this controller. Because these are pretty rare and I'm gonna be giving those back, but I'm, I'm gonna get to keep this and play with the Aquarius and see what I can do with it. Uh, of course, you know, we'll do the Mandelbrot plot with it and, and other things, but I want to see uh, what what sort of games and demos this can be uh, made. And, and some folks in the community have already done that, and I, of course, want to try my hand at doing that. So let, let's take a, a quick look at the ports here. Like I said, we have the legacy things, the cartridge, controller ports, but then new things like SD card. We've got some audio ports over here. And we've got here uh, the uh, micro uh, USB. And I'm guessing that must be for uh, power. <laughs> I didn't get 
any sort of power adapter in here, so I'm going to have to figure that out. Uh, then we've got a USB port. I believe this is composite output. And then a VGA out and then a, a nice physical power switch. And so that's pretty much it. And this is a nice uh, 3D printed case that uh, comes with it. And yeah, this looks like a pretty neat little package. So let's get uh, some stuff hooked up to it. First, we'll get our uh, VGA monitor on there. So that's pretty simple. We'll go ahead and pl plug in our controller. <laughs> and then we'll take a look here at these ports. Now, I don't see any labeling on these ports, so I don't know which is which. One of these has got to be the sound output. So we'll, we'll figure that out. So I got my sound. Let's, let's say it's the one on the front. We're gonna, we're gonna see what happens when we uh, plug that in. And now I just, I need to get a keyboard uh, here. I'll connect that via USB and I need uh, micro USB power. All right, so here's my handy Amazon basic keyboard that I know has PS2 support. Cause I'm not sure if this is native USB. I think it's native USB support, uh, but just to be safe, I know this keyboard will be able to do PS2 signaling uh, no problem, just like it does on the Aegon Light 2. All right, now we will plug this guy in here. And we'll try turning it on. Oh, and there we go. We got an LED. Oh, and I've got a screen. Let's take a look. All right, so here's our uh, basic. <laughs> when it lights right up. So uh, I do have the SD card in there. Don't have the cartridge plugged in. So let me hit return and see. Oh, <laughs> uh, maybe not. Maybe that doesn't work so well. <laughs> it seems the Mattel tradition of keyboards not working is uh, staying alive. So let's, uh, let's try uh, seeing if the game will boot. So I'm gonna stick that cartridge right in there. All right, it's a little wobbly, but it seems like it's in there. Let's turn that on and see what happens. Ah, so it looks like the game is working. And I've got the controller. Let me see if I got sound. I got a nice hum coming out. So this gives me a very high pitched squeal. So this might be what's actually working. Uh, let's see, buttons. No, no, no sound coming out of that. Let me try. Let's see. No, no sound out of there. No sound out of there. Maybe those are for modem. Oh, there we go. All right, well, something's not quite right with the Aquarius Plus. So we're gonna have to go in there and uh, see what's going on. Because uh, I talked to uh, Sean, the, you know, the developer project lead and the guy who gave me this, uh, what could be happening with the weird video and the keyboard not responding. And he said there's uh, improvement to uh, the ROM on here, uh, a new uh, version of the FPGA image that can be flashed on there. And so I just got to crack it open and uh, and hopefully that'll get it working once I give it a little update because this is still one of the early development models. Uh, I was also hint, uh, alerted to where the um, serial numbers are. And so here I have prototype number six made by Scott P. Harrington, or Sean P. Harrington, sorry, <laughs> right there, made uh, July 18th, 2023. And uh, and this is so just over a month, uh, month ago from when I was filming this. So it's still one of the, the very first, I had number five, the Commander X-16, I got number six of this, I'll take it.
<laughs> All right, so let's uh, let's get this open. So under under the bottom, it's got these rubber feet, but luckily I don't have to take the rubber feet off. I can just take these exposed screws right off. This is definitely not quite as luxe as the Laser 3D uh, case for the Commander X16. This is just going into the plastic, and instead of being laser cut, uh, this is uh, 3D printed, but it's a really nice job. Or is this 3D printed? This, Yeah, it's 3D printed. You can feel that. Listen. There's your 3D printed texture, but it's a really nice quality. This is not your high school project shaggy dog job. All right, so there's the screws are off. So I should be able to just pop this off. And there we go. Here is a nice white PCB, a white solder mask. You don't see that too often. But you know who has these white solder masks? That's right, PCB Way. They, of course, are the sponsor of the Retro Desk. And uh, let's talk about some of the services beyond making these beautiful PCBs like this. PCB Way can do the 3D printing for you in case you don't have one of your own. And you can even do injection molding if you want to do a little more production for your dream. Or get some parts CNC machined, or even this online <laughs> sheet metal fabrication service. It's really amazing, really professional products. But of course, the core service of PCB Way is to get custom PCBs made for as little as $5. And with an open source project like the Aquarius Plus, you can just upload the files from GitHub to PCB Way and have them run off as many as you want. And using the bill of materials that comes with a project, you can have all of those ordered along with it or even installed right on the PCB if you don't want to do all the soldering yourself. So however you want to make your dream happen, make it happen through PCB way. All right. So let's take a look at some of the components here before we get into it. So here we have Wi-Fi and storage. That's the ESP32 in here. We can see it is the... ESP32 S3 W Room 1. So that has Wi Fi and Bluetooth capability similar to that uh, TT Go 32. And it also supplies the uh, SD card interface just like that card does. And then here we've got our FPGA. It is a uh, Spartan 6. So, you know. A decent sized one. We've got here our RAM chip. And here is an actual Z80 CPU. So it is not emulated uh, Z80. It's got an actual Z80 package on there, which is a very nice touch. So then the FPGA is just providing all of the other logic on here. It looks like we just have a few other basic bits of logic. I'm not sure what these little chips are. <laughs> I can't read what's on the labels. <laughs> we got some voltage regulators over here. And then a bunch of little tiny resistors and capacitors, just little surface mount guys. So yeah, no, very, very nice to see. Ah, and now things are actually printed. So we can see that that rear uh, eighth inch jack is just for audio out. And then here, these jacks, cassette out, cassette in, and a special printer jack, which I think is interesting that the Aquarius has this eighth inch connector for the printer. Uh, very strange. So anyway, that's, uh, <laughs> that's what we got down here. We've got just a couple of big uh, electrolytic caps on there. And otherwise, a uh, pretty sleek little little unit here. Uh, I mean, still very simple. Obviously, a lot of complexity can be baked into the FPGA. And then, of course, the ESP32 is sort of being a secondary processor for handling the, the networking and the file system. And so the Z80 can just be just be running the software. All right. Okay. So let's let's see how we're gonna update what's running here on the FPGA, and I guess on the ESP32 also. So I know that we've got these jumpers here, 
and I've got to go consult the magic books to see uh, what jumpers I need to connect. I think I need to to steal some jumpers from something else because it it doesn't come with any jumpers on it. Consulting the uh, interwebs, I see that JP one two and three all need to have jumpers on them. So I found some jumpers. I had to uh, borrow them from my trusty old mister. So <laughs> that's just going to have to be out of commission uh, for a short period of time. I don't think anybody's going to miss it. Because hopefully this will just work really quickly. So... All right, so there's our three uh, jumpers are on there. And then I just, instead of uh, hooking up to like a cell phone charger or something, I am gonna plug right into my computer. My boring modern computer. All right, so that's on there. I'm gonna switch it on. It's uh, saying now all I have to do is run this script. I already have the ESP tool installed that will, uh, I guess it's just doing everything through this ESP32. And I guess that's going to program the uh, FPGA or at least supply the FPGA with its uh, image. And let's see what happens. Right, okay. Oh, things are definitely happening here. It is writing a bunch of stuff. <laughs> and all right, so it wrote and it's doing a hard reset. And then it says, after the tool finished, turn off the Aquarius Plus by turning off its power switch to the off position all right there it goes and so now allegedly uh everything should be fine um so yeah i'll get take those jumpers back off and we'll get this all put to get back together remove power take off these jumpers And then we'll put this lovely case back on, make sure I'm doing it the right way. Yes, Hercules. Yes, I understand, it's very exciting. I know you want this to work just as badly as I do. I know. We would have liked it to have worked right out of the box, but that just wasn't the case this time. Now I have this power supply. It is a nine watt power supply, which means it's it's less than two amps. Uh, Scott or Sean, I keep on calling him Scott. Uh, Sean uh, said that I should try to get a, at least a two amp power supply on there. So I'm gonna to try to see what I can scrounge up. So here we go. All right, that screwed back in. Let's get this hooked back up. We're gonna just try getting back to configuration that was working before. Of course, the keyboard is chancy. I won't even connect the keyboard, but I'll connect this legacy controller and Astro Smash. So that's in there nice and solid. That's pack in. Turn on the Astro Smash. Let's see what happens. There we go. We got our Astro Smash. And there we go, I die instantly. That's how you know it's working. It would probably be failing 
and then I'd be able to play it well, even a game as simple as this. So here we can see kind of the games that Mattel had uh, originally intended. So I think this is, I think Mattel made this game themselves. All right, and so it says MI 1982 Hong Kong. So it might've been something that was outsourced to Mattel's Hong Kong subsidiary, or maybe they just were manufacturing the carts in Hong Kong. I don't know, I've got a lot of history to learn about these systems. But you know, this is a very, very basic, you know, shoot stuff from the ground, you know. But it's, it's, it's cute. But yeah, obviously very primitive graphics that you have here, big blocky uh, sprites, but my understanding is they weren't actual sprites. And one of the things that Aquarius Plus is, is that it gives you actual hardware sprites. And so these were, were blocky because they had to be sort of drawn on top. But there we go. Oh, see, I even make it to the next level. All right, so, so that seems to be working. Now the big test is, will basic work? So I'm gonna take out the controller. Take out Astro Smash, and once again try the cheapo Amazon keyboard. All right, let's turn this on again. See what happens. Oh, interesting. So now it, it seems to be cycling between colors uh, more deliberately instead of just flashing. So let's see, <gasps> look at that. <laughs> All right, I think we're in business now, right? Print, hello. Look at that, basic, basic works. <laughs> All right, so, so this is definitely working. So let's, let's sort of investigate what we have to see here. And I've plugged the controller back in because I don't know how well it handles the hot <laughs> swapping of things. So here we go. Let's see it on the second time. Look at that second time it boots up like a charm. All right, so we saw before it, uh, it loads right up into basic so we can do all the fun basic things. But now with the SD card inserted, I can do a DIR and here's a bunch of stuff on there. So I'm gonna just do CD into ROMs so, uh, oh, didn't like that. Ah, I need quotes. <laughs> so I'm saying it, it's kind of DOS-ish in turn, or like CPM with uh, DIR and CD, but uh, it does want quotes here for these uh, string arguments. So there we go. And oh, look at all these. So we can see there, there's Astro ROM. I think that is Astro Smash. So what I, I should be able to do is say run astro.rom and there it goes. <laughs> you see, look my no cartridge and there it is. And now I've got my controller and look at that. Runs exactly the same, <laughs> not surprisingly. <laughs> and look, I died just the same. So, so yeah, you don't need to have the legacy cartridges, but the nice thing is, is that you do have them. So that when you have uh, legacy peripherals or homebrew peripherals, or even homebrew games that come out on a cartridge like this, you can just stick it in there. Of course, you can always just have digital versions on the SD card. And that's the nice thing about having uh, the option for that for these modern systems. So let's, uh, let's see what Burger Time looks like. Here we go. Oh, look at this. High resolution graphics. Just one. <laughs> oh, look at that. All right, well that is definitely Burger Time. It's got all the music for Burger Time. Oh boy. And I die just like playing Burger Time. All right, so this is definitely a, a little more, uh, you know, up, the, uh, up to the, the expectations for systems at the time. And my playing, of course, lives up to my expectations of just utter failure. 
Let's see how smart it is. Can I just do this? I can. Look at that. Don't need to close quotes or anything. Like a boss. Something that also looks familiar. Tron DD. That must be the that Tron disc game. Uh, of course, there was a very good version of that for in television. We'll see how this one does. I don't know if this is uh, case sensitive or not. I'm going to assume that it is. Tron Deadly Discs. Oh, there we go. Okay. Looks like it's two. And then... Uh, Oh, no. Okay, one. Hold down one, and then push the direction. There we go. It looks like I can do control escape. Aha! Look at that. That's much better. All right. So let's take a look here at what else we got. So we looked at the classic games. Let's see what sort of uh, demos are. Tutorial? I... I not too smart for tutorial. I don't need that. <laughs> As you can see, obviously, I'm not fumbling at all through any of this. Let's see. How about animate? Run me dot basketball. I, I, I have to do that. If I just say run me. No. Nope. Okay, so very simple, and then it's, okay. Uh, so let, you can see here in the basic, it has the uh, file system command so that you can CD into a subdirectory. And then here it looks like it's loading up a bunch of uh, stuff here. Huh, interesting, it seems like it's loading all of these to the same address, or maybe not. Maybe it has like sort of a header in there to tell you where to load those things. I don't know. We're, we'll find out. Let's see if it works. Oh, look at that. Oh, and it is really, uh, really doing a, a number on that uh, SD card. <laughs> Let's see what AQ theory, Aquarius theory is. All right, so it's got all that and another run me dot bass. Now let's see, can I just do a run? Run me dot bass. I can. Oh, color and graphics here. Oh, and then Sean made this himself. So here we go. All right, do I enter? I do. Ah, look at this. So this is a pretty good uh, demo then of what we can do. So here looks like we have a 16 color palette. And and then it has the halftone character, and it looks like you can combine uh, any two colors from the palette. So there we go, stochastic characters. Can you? Oh, very nice. I don't know if those stochastic characters are built into the character set. That would be pretty interesting. Of course, it's simple enough to make your own, but. But why bother if somebody's done it for you? <laughs> Use Bloxels to scale up your graphics and create your own custom animation tiles and sequences. Blocky can be beautiful, indeed. So I wonder if that, that's what the case was with those really blocky sprites there in Astro Smash, if those were just Bloxels that were blown up to be uh, extra big and blocky. Hmm. Oh, and there we go. There's our animation. Very nice. I like the little robot guy. Oh, a full set of piping characters we use to create lettering. Draw connected elements such as roads, channels, and frames. Look at all that. Oh, very nice. So very similar to uh, those uh, piping characters that you see in the Petsky uh, character set. So you get a lot of the same sort of capabilities there. Oh, look at these guys. Oh, please. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, Disney. Please don't sue me. Don't sue me over this. Don't take my video down. So yeah, if you want to find out about this stuff, here's some of the, the URLs, but I'll put links in the description about how, how to get more information on this and how to order one yourself because they are uh, very close to being put onto the market. In fact, probably by the time this video comes out, they'll be ready to order. Ah, so now I think these are going to be the Aquarius Plus games, of course. Not a whole lot of games made specifically for this new system yet. 
but of course somebody had to make a Tetris. It's not a game system until somebody makes a Tetris for it. So let's see, let's see what this one looks like. All right, Tetris.hack. That's another 15K thing. I see a regular pattern here. So let's see. Oh, look at this. Well, isn't this nice? But here you can hear some of the music. It's definitely more advanced uh, music than we got before. So yeah, you can see a lot better graphics and sound capability. I'm just gonna have to figure out how to actually, how to actually play a game on here. Uh, because it doesn't seem like it responds to the old controller or the keyboard in this case. Even though we see these directories on here, these are the directories that are on the SD card, um, but there are uh, other things built into the ESP microcontroller, and apparently we can just run stuff off of there. So what we do have on there is ESP colon settings.cac. So here we go. Now we can, we're actually, uh, looks like we've uh, moved over to the ESP32 over here and we can see the compile date. This is this newer firmware that I just installed. And let me see, help. So show Wi-Fi status, set Wi-Fi network and show current date time. So if I show the date <laughs> i'm li really living in the past way before the uh way before the uh, aquarius the original aquarius even came out so let's let's get hooked up to the wi-fi so wi-fi set scanning networks oh and there it is <laughs> there's my uh my uh wi-fi and I'll put my password in here. Okay. And it seemed to be cool with that. Let's see my Wi-Fi status now. There we go. All connected. <laughs> Very nice. So now if I look at my date, it's uh, not quite <laughs> set up right. So let's see, uh, show current time zone. Uh, let's set our time zone. TZ set, and I am in America, and I am in a place that still has stupid daylight savings time. And there we go. Now, so set time zone, let's see, date. Oh, now I'm, I'm going back further, 1969. All right, uh, so let's see. So I can do a system update from SD card or from GitHub. So if I did update GH, and that was V0.14. So hopefully you should recognize I already have that. Yeah, already running this firmware version. Well, look at that. It's smart enough to do to know that all right so how do i get my uh how do i get the the date time set because you like date oh look hey look at that i think finally trying to hit a website did that so now you can see when i'm filming this it's after midnight of course when am else when else am i gonna have time to do all this nonsense for you all right so it looks like i'm uh hooked up now uh, to uh, the Wi-Fi, and now the next time a firmware update comes, I'm not going to have to uh, open this up or even put something on the SD card. I'll just be able to download it directly onto the unit, which is a really nice feature to have. So uh, let's see here. I'll just go back to basic, and there it is. Look at that. So a lot of a lot of interesting things that are happening here let's let's see about music before we go songs one oh and there's this uh, pt3 player so let's see uh 
Let's see what that is. Let's see. Zero. Oh, look at all this music. Penny Hill. Is this going to be Yakety Sax? It certainly is. <laughs> Again, whoever owns the rights to Yakety Sax, please, uh, Please don't uh, sue me. Please don't take this video off of YouTube. <laughs> very cute. So there we can hear, uh, you know, a very, uh, you know, uh, PSG uh, style waveform selection style music happening there. So yeah, it sounds like everything is just sort of based on on waveforms. We got like little little farty noises that it can make. <laughs> Everything with that quick oscillation. So it's got to be doing some pulse width modulation in there. <laughs> Sounds very neat. So this would be a lot of fun stuff to play with. So that's, that's the Aquarius Plus. I'm going to be doing some more fun stuff with this. We're going to see what else uh, we can do. Uh, besides play these old games and I got a couple of new things. I'm going to, of course, <laughs> got to try to make this uh, do the Mandelbrot plot. <laughs> it's got to uh, see this little uh, Z80 in here. If that can spin up as fast as the uh, other Z80 based systems that we got. Uh, like, how does this compare? Uh, not just to something like the uh, Amstrad CPC, but how would this compare with a like the Aegon Light? Uh, of course, the Aegon's probably going to be faster. It's that Easy 80. I think that is running at uh, well, that's running at 18 uh, megahertz. I know we'll have to see what this is running at. I'm not exactly sure, but who knows? Maybe this is faster. And of course, this has the beefier ESP32 on there. One could always just go to the ESP32 and uh, and try to maybe offload some calculation on there if that's possible. So I had a little talk with Sean here before we go. I wanted to show a couple other things that I missed. That uh, of course here is the Astro Smash uh, cartridge in the system, and. Uh, we saw how on the SD card, there's already a ROM image of Astro Smash. Well, how do we get one of those ROM images? Well, it turns out with the Aquarius Plus, that's as easy as holding down the power, AKA Windows key and hitting F12. And there we go. It saved a cartridge to dump file that ROM. It said right up there at the top. And so now shut it off. Pull out the cartridge. Let's get it back on. And now we'll see. There it is, dumpfile.rom. And so if we run dumpfile.rom, guess what? It's Astro Smash. <laughs> and then we're playing it. Look at that. And dying, just as we expect. So there we go. That's that's how you get it. So in case you have other cartridges like Astro Smash, something that you don't have on the SD card that comes with it, uh, or if you have a homebrew cartridge or one you made yourself, it's always as easy as just doing that Power F12. So let's see. Let's see. The other thing was on uh, in the games. The one uh, Aquarius Plus native game that I have on here is uh, Tetris. So I couldn't figure out how to how to play that because you know I I'm not the the brightest uh, person here when it comes to gaming. So <laughs> run Tetris dot cac and so apparently it's W A S D. <laughs> derp derp derp. See there we go and an M do the rotate. And so that very nice, uh, smooth version of Tetris. Tetris is a game I'm actually semi-competent at, so it's kind of surprising that this was the one that uh, <laughs> kind of tripped me up here. So yeah, very nice little Tetris game. So I'm hoping to see a lot more games on here. 
Uh, and I'll, I'll think I'll try my hand at making a game, or maybe even porting one of my games. So we'll see how that goes. All right. <laughs> I'll have to play some more of this later. But no, this is really cool. It's very much like the uh, the Tengen Tetris that was for uh, uh, the NES before Nintendo said, no, we're going to have our own Tetris. And <laughs> we don't want Atari uh, coming in making unlicensed games for us. So there we go. Let's get out of there. We're going to see here my very first program for the Aquarius Plus. Fully backwards compatible with original Aquarius. Of course, to thank my patrons for supporting my channel and for giving me the opportunity to do things like try out awesome new retro computers like the Aquarius Plus. So all the information that you want could ever want to have for the Aquarius Plus it will be in the description uh, along with a, a link to my Patreon. If you want to support my channel and see me do more things like this, then uh, please uh, do that and then you'll get ad-free access to my videos before they are published. But if you don't want to do that, you can always like, comment, and of course subscribe all for free right here on YouTube. And uh, Click that bell to be notified, and you will know exactly when I publish each and every one of my videos. All right. Thank you. Take care, and I will see you again soon. Bye-bye.